Hello again and welcome to another Mordi and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, I want to have a little chit and dare I say chat about a possible new effective and competitive way for you to run the Emperor's true finest, his Imperial Guard. This new theory combines both the traditional mass quantity tactics of the guard with the quality of elite units such as Kazakin and Scions. And I think it has the potential to be damn effective on the tabletop. So come with me now on a journey as we explore the concept of Grenadier Guard. Good news everyone, Bolt Action 3rd Edition is just around the corner. And the best way that you can prepare for this new and exciting edition of one of my favorite games of all time is by getting yourself some new bolt action miniatures. But where can you get these models? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. There's an affiliate link down in the description below that will take you straight to the Warlord Games website and you can get your World War II miniature fix right from the source. By using the affiliate link down in the description below, not only will you be getting some awesome models, but you will also be supporting the channel. A massive thank you to Warlord Games for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back into the action. So before we get into the nitty gritty of Grenadier Guard, I want to share with you the recent tournament journey that I have been on. If you have been following this channel for a while now, you will see that during 2024, I have been to a lot of tournaments. And I recently worked out that I had played about 100 competitive games of Warhammer. And a lot of those games, I have been running tried and true techniques and tactics such as mechanized guard pure infantry guard and other ones that aren't particularly out of the box that are staples of the guard that we're just sort of trying out to see how they work in 10th edition but more recently i've been trying out some wacky ideas and army lists and i want to be clear here we're not talking about taking utter meme lists although i still like to do that or taking complete skew lists we're talking about taking a themed list that still turns out to be quite effective. And a good example of this was when I had some very good success with my Recon Company Guard Army. This list threw out all of the traditional heavy hitters of the Guard. No Lehman Russes, no Rogal Dawns. And instead traded out the traditional grinding advanced style of the Guard for a very fast moving hard hitting list and I actually ended up playing into Dark Elder with it and it made me realize that this was kind of like pseudo Dark Elder. You've got a lot of speed, a lot of maneuverability and it allows you to get lots of different angles, hit your opponent when they're not expecting it and it just made me realize there are a lot of different ways you can run your guard and those different ways can be very, very effective without trying to look for a weak point in the game or trying to break the game with some spammed broken unit. And so I took this idea of building a themed yet powerful army built on solid theoretical principles and I ran with it. And I started exploring some other ways that I thought God might be able to mix things up without compromising on their tabletop. And after many sleepless nights and many long days where I let this stew in the slow cooker of my brain, I came up with a new theory, and that is the Grenadier Guard. What if the Guard didn't have to pick between quantity and quality? What if we could have the best of both worlds? What if instead of taking cheap Katachan units or big blobs of Death Corps of Krieg, instead we started running massed elite infantry like Scions and Kazakin, but supporting them with those units that they don't normally use, such as Rogal Dawns, Lehman Russes, big tanks and artillery. Now, the idea of taking mass scions is not a new one. In fact, pure scion armies have been around for a long time. And a lot of players, including myself, have tried them out in 10th edition. 
But the difference here is we're not talking about pure scions. We're essentially talking about throwing out the traditional battle line choices of the guard, throwing out those staple units, and instead replacing them with scions. You see, in the past, scions have not been able to take advantage of the wider guard motor pool. You've had Scions in Torx Primes, you've had Scions Deep Striking Down, you've had Scions in Valkyries, but when you wanted to run your pure Scion army, you couldn't then run things like tanks or artillery. Scions were, were their own sort of separate faction or like a pseudo separate faction, depending on the edition that we're talking about. But with 10th, all of those barriers have come down. In 10th, there's no reason why you can't take a Scion squad, load it in a Chimera, and have that as a mechanized unit rather than having a unit of Catachans. And I want to be clear here, we're not talking exclusively about Scions here because you do also have Kazakim. And when you actually take a moment and work out how many of these elite infantry you can get in your army, it's a lot. In total, it is possible to fit 105 Scions, Scion Command Squad members, and Kazakin into an army. That is more than I would normally take if I was running regular Guard Infantry. So you've got plenty and plenty of bodies at your disposal, more than you're probably going to need. The average Guard player runs between 50 and 80 infantry in an army. In theory, those 50 to 80 infantry could all be Scions. And rather than running around with las guns and a couple of flamers, you could be running around with hotshot las guns, plasma pistols, power fists, melter guns, plasma guns, and a whole bunch of other weapons. You've got Kazakim, you've got melter mine stuff. You get a lot of equipment. In fact, you often get more special weapons than you get regular rifle wielding bozos in these elite guard formations of course it isn't so simple as just to swap out 10 katachans for 10 kazakin or 10 scions because there is a very important and distinctive difference between these units points cost Guard, battle, and infantry cost between 55 and 65 points and if you want to run similar numbers aka 10-man squads of your elite guard, you're looking at 100 to 110 points. And those points are going to have to come from somewhere. And this is where I think the trickiness of Grenadier Guard is. This is where I think it becomes difficult and where the skill in adapting and implementing this play style is. Because you have to try and balance that guard brain, that natural tendency to spam and to take quantity above all else. I mean, there's a motto in the guard community. If it's worth taking once, it's worth taking three times. And if it's infantry, it's often worth taking six times. You never see someone taking one or two chimeras in a guard army. You always see people taking six chimeras. And you never see people taking one or two Lehman Russes. There's four, five, six tanks of various varieties in the guard. We like our quantity but you have to balance this with becoming more precise and being more efficient and being ruthless like a scion you have to both combine the hammer and the scalpel of the emperor and i have had a go at trying to achieve this and i have built a couple of potential grenadier guard style army lists now these are just theory crafted list i've chucked a few things into new recruit to see what i can come up with and i'll make sure that there is a link to both of these army lists down in the description below one thing to bear in mind if you are looking through those army lists is i have not specified the individual special weapons for units like the scions there's a couple of reasons for this Firstly, I was just playing around with the concept in New Recruit and just seeing the overall points cost of units and how I could squeeze those into my army list. And secondly, I was kind of leaving it a bit open in case people wanted to play with those army lists and put their own special weapon choices in there based on their collection or their preferences. With that said, getting into the first of these rough army lists, we have what I would call a traditional hybrid 
Grenadier Guard Army with the Grenadier Guard concept and theory applied. I have tried to get a good balance of infantry, tanks, indirect fire and secondary objective scoring units, the four pillars that make every good hybrid guard army. In my character selection, I have gone for three Militant Tempestus Command Squads and a Tank Commander with Grand Strategist. For my Battle Line Infantry, I have gone for three 10-man squads of Scions. Each one of those is going to be led by one of the Command Squads, and I've gone for two 5-man squads of Scions. The idea is to use these big bricks of Scions like traditional infantry, possibly even have them starting on the board, screening for my tanks as they move up, but also being able to deliver some good damage in their own right. I mean, we've got 15 bodies in each one of these units. We're going to have lots of special weapons. These are going to be cheaper than Death Corps Kree Blobs, yet bring in more special weapons to the fight. And of course, the idea behind the two five-man science squads is to be able to deep strike down and get some secondary objectives like established locus and behind enemy lines. For my other infantry, I have got two 10-man Kazakin units, and I've actually put those inside Toroxes. The scout move of the Kazakin plus the 12 inch move of the Torox, plus the fact that it can advance and the Kazakh can still get out and shoot, allows these guys to be very, very fast. They can be early objective go getters. They can be rapid reaction forces that can counter attack any potential enemy deep strikes or breakthroughs, or they can be used to put pressure on the enemy early, zooming up super fast, the guys jumping out and starting to deliver an initial punch to the enemy. You may decide that you don't want the Toroxes in the list. I mean, Kazakin and Torox is a bit of a potential wacky idea, but it's something I have been playing around with. I think there's a lot of merit to it, but if you drop the Toroxes from your army and decide to put some more elite infantry in there, I wouldn't blame you at all. Another wild card that I threw in, but I think kind of fits with this idea of specialists and trying to have more nuance and more tools in the toolbox, is I went for a squad of five Rattlings. Now, I had a few points left over in the list and I wasn't sure what to go for. I put the Rattlings in because it gives us some infiltrators. This could also help with our secondary game, our initial primary game, and might help screw over enemy scouting units as well. Again, a bit like with the Toroxes, the Rattlings are a bit of a wild card. You could possibly drop the Rattlings and all the Toroxes and just go for masses of 10-man bricks of elite infantry. And I genuinely don't think you'd be doing anything wrong if you did that. It's just sort of, like I said, trying to play around this idea and sort of try, find this balance between going down that traditional guard mindset of lots and lots of spam, as if this time the spam's got some teeth, or, and then trying to take something that has a little bit more finesse to it. As for the armor support in this list, well, we've got the tank commander. We've given him Grand Strategist, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have him boss around a couple of Rogal Dawns. Normally, a guard army, I like four or five tanks, but double Dawn supported by a tank commander is plenty of armor. And bear in mind that some of the damage dealing of this list is going to be reliably coming from our infantry. Normally in the guard, your infantry does supplemental extra damage. Maybe it doesn't even do any damage and really it's just there to score points and screen and stuff. But I feel like the elite aspect of the Scions of the Grenadier Guard is going to help support and sort of blur the lines between fire support and primary objective getter. And that takes a little bit of pressure off the Double Dawn and the Tank Commander to uh, do all the damage in the army. And at the end of the day, Double Dawn is still very, very punchy and is going to be doing a lot of work. Now, because in this list, I'm actually planning on starting all of my infantry on the board, I needed some indirect fire because I couldn't rely upon my scions to be pseudo indirect fire. And so I went for a couple of basilisks. A brace of basilisks sat on my home objective. That's generally going to be the plan for them. This means I don't have to have something else sitting on a home objective. And it means I get to have indirect fire. It gives me some fire support, helps me slow enemies down. And basilisks just generally are a very good take or come as artillery piece and i think between the basilisks and the rogal dawns and the infantry this army is going to be punching quite hard but we've also got plenty of bodies and we've also got plenty of armor in the list as well 
But then we get to the second army list that I built. And this was an adaptation of another favorite guard, playstyle mechanized guard. Taking the tried and tested mech guard concept and marrying it to this grenadier guard mindset was actually a really enjoyable mental exercise. And this is what I've come up with. We've got a Tempestus command squad and a tank commander for the characters. And then we've got four 10-man squads of Scions and two 5-man squads of Scions. We've then got two Kazakin units, a single Basilisk, double Rogal Dawn, three Chimeras and two Toroxes. The idea is we're going to have one of the big 10-man science squads with the five-man command squad and have that as a giga blob and use that as some pseudo indirect fire. This is why we've only got the one basilisk in the list. That basilisk is going to sit at the back, slowing some units down, doing a little bit of indirect fire damage, but the other indirect fire is going to come from this giga blob. We've then got the three other 10-man squads of science and they're going to go inside chimeras, giving us some really good armored punch and some bricks of science that we can dump out onto objectives. And then we've got Got the two Kazakhin squads again inside those Toroxes going for that sort of fast moving concept that we've been playing around with and supporting all of this infantry and mechanized assets we have got three big tanks with the double dawn and the tank commander now i've gone for that double dawn tank commander in both army lists because it allows me to get a very efficient tank core in the army rather than having to take a, a lord solar and then three or four tanks or two tank commanders and three or four Lehman russes these three tanks just come together in a very nice neat package but if you wanted to go down the more traditional ross route you absolutely could do this is just where my mind sort of naturally gravitated to because i was thinking about quality not just quantity now zooming out for a moment and looking at the mech list in its entirety we have got five mechanized units which is the normal amount that you'd have in a mech guard you sort of had five to six chimera squads but we've got five mechanized units here we've got three big tanks and in a mech guard army i typically say you want sort of four tanks but i always count rogal dawns as sort of one and a half tanks so in this case you know that's sort of four tanks there or you know the rough equivalent thereof we've got a couple of bits of indirect fire in there as well with the basilisk and the giga blob and then we've got a couple of uh five man squads for doing that secondary game the all important locusts behind the lines that kind of good stuff and if we zoom out a bit further and look at both of these armies, yes, they are a bit different. Yes, they are a new twist on an old concept, but we haven't compromised the foundations. We haven't missed out on our fundamental principles, those four pillars that I mentioned. You want an infantry corps, whether it's mechanized or on foot. You want tanks to do direct damage. You want indirect fire to be able to touch those units your opponent is trying to hide. And you want to make sure you're taking into account damage dedicated secondary game as well both of these armies have this so theoretically both these armies have got all the tools that they need to be able to score lots of points in games of 40k and they should be good however i don't mean to alarm you but i have lied to you you see before i said i had built two of these grenadier guard style armies but whilst filming this video, I had a little evil thought. I had an idea. And I thought to myself, what would happen if we just stopped being so clever? We stopped focusing on the scion part of the brain. And if we just lean ever so slightly more into the guard quantity side of my brain. With this list, I decided not to be so clever. With this list, I decided to let my Ogun brain take over. With this list, I decided to try and turn Scions into a blunt brute force weapon. And what I came up with was three Tempestus command squads, a tank commander with Grand Strategist, six 10-man Scion squads, three 10-man Kazakhin squads, a Basilisk, and double Rogal Dawn. The idea is that 
The Basilisk can sit on the home objective. I'm going to have at least some of these sounds deep striking. Hell, I could have all three Giga Blobs deep strike if I wanted to. And I'm still going to start on the board with 60 infantry, 30 of which will be scouting. This gives me... And we've got two Rogal Dawns of Tank Command here as well. This means that we have lots of indirect fire. This means that we have a decent amount of tanks. This means that we have a good infantry starting presence. In fact, the only thing that really really isn't working in this list and where we might need to actually try and be a bit clever is I don't have any dedicated secondary game. I also, this list is coming in right now at 1980 points, so I've got 20 points I could play around with. But the idea is right there. Maybe I could turn one of the Tempest Sound Squads into a five-man squad and that would give me 70 points left over. Maybe that could get me a... Chimera for one of the Kazakhan units and have a Scout Mirror. I don't know. There's things we can play around with, but yes, it is entirely possible to take double Rogal Dawn and 105 Elite Infantry. I suppose you could probably play around this a little bit. You could drop the Kazakhan. So you could drop two to Kazakhan and get triple Rogal Dawn. That would give us. 85 elite infantry, triple Rogal Dawn, and a tank commander, and a basilisk. It would mean we probably have to start on the board with some of the Giga Blobs rather than deep striking them all in. But there's something there, right? Maybe the concept of Grandier Guard is nuanced. Maybe the concept of Grandier Guard does require combining the blade and the hammer, the two twin halves of the guard. Or maybe. You can just go full guard mode on the Scions and run them in a very, very massed up and quantity way. And so you do get quantity as a quality of its own, but then also quality has a quality of its own. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think that the more nuanced guard and scion hybrid style armies are going to be more effective or am i overcomplicating this and will this theory work best when we just go full hog brute force lots and lots of scions lots and lots of rogal dawns and we just smash our enemies let me know which route you think will be more effective also, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and Patreons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty to a heartfelt thank you to alex dengal bon bon vert lord prior mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone try again bright John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible, and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much.
that's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.